guys, Bellhaven here, and I have another Things and Stuff Explained video for you guys. Today we're going to be covering decks and attunement. Now, I'm hoping you guys have watched the prior video to this, which is XP pools and uh, skill training explained which runs through training your skills, using your XP pool effectively, and things of that nature. So that's kind of a prelude to this video. Today we're gonna to talk about attunement and decks. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with attunement because I think it's kind of important. Um, when I was talking to you about XP, I had mentioned attunement. Now attunement is actually very important. If you pull up any of your trees in your magic, you will see this little guy up here and you can see underneath it says life attunement and then it reads, it increases the power of life skills and resistance to negative life effects, aka death. Attunement is increased by training active life skills. So now I will tell you this, resistance to negative life effects, it's resistance to everything opposite of itself. So life would be resistant to death, death would be resistant to life. Earth would be resistant to air, sun to moon, fire to water, etc. Um, but a, you achieve attunement by getting skills in each of the abilities in that given tree. So I have 59 life attunement. Now that is all of these skills contributing to my life attunement. So if I had every one of these skills GM'd and at 100, I would have 100 life attunement. Uh, there's also certain things you can get to modify that, such as gems. So diamonds can be turned into gems, which can further your life attunement. Um, onyxes are death attunement, so on and so forth. But at 100 and GM of each of these skills, I would have 100 life attunement, which would mean even more of these skills would be effective. Now that's important to explain because it goes back into my leveling effectively speech in my previous video. I tell you to lock everything at 40 and there's a couple of reasons for that. When you're first leveling up, you want to get as many of these skills up as you can at once. But if you try to level everything at the same time, you won't really get anything in any of them. That's kind of what I explained in the last video. So with that being said, 40 is a good place to cap. And I say that because it doesn't drain as much of your XP to get each of these to 40. At level 40, you get four of each glyph. Uh, and also it would overall, if you can get everything to 40, which is fairly quick and easy to do, you would be put at 40 attunement, which is a good place to start. And then from there, start moving everything to 60. As you can see, I started to do. I kind of forgot about a couple of them and left them on, but they're really good anyway, so it's fine. But then try moving each of them to 60, and that'll give you 60 attunement. And then the higher your attunement, the higher and more effective all the skills will be. So if you go through and get all of them to 40, instead of just trying to get, say, Healing Burst up to 90 right away and totally neglecting Purify and Banish Undead and the passives, uh, it'll make that skill more effective by training the other skills in that tree. It's, it's kind of crazy to wrap your head around sometimes, you know, but regardless of how high level that skill is, it will never be as powerful as if you had all the other skills up as well. If that makes sense. I hope I hope that makes sense. So that's that's kind of attunement in a nutshell. And then let's go on to deck building. So if you hit Y, you can see all your different decks. As you can tell, I have a quite a few different ones, which we can get rid of some of these. <laughs> okay, so you can have a total of six, I believe. And with that being said, I usually run as many of those as possible, and I'm constantly deleting them. Like I'm actually going to do right now. So we'll go ahead and make a brand new deck. So right now, <clears throat> sorry about that. Right now I'm in Deep Ravenswood. 
So when you make a deck, you want the deck to be designed for what you're going to be doing. If I was at a group, in a group at a control point, I would make a deck specifically for that instance. If I was with a pet, like you've seen me with Ivory before and some other pets I've had, I would make a deck with my pet because pets drain focus, which if you guys want a pet video, feel free to comment below and I would be happy to make one for you guys. Um, so naturally, you want your deck to reflect exactly what you're going to be doing. So let's go ahead and get into a new deck. All right, so it'll bring up this screen and it'll say 23 slugs, 23 glyphs. So 23 is the minimum amount of spells or glyphs that I need in this deck. So the first thing I'm going to do is rename it. So Deep Raven's Wood, no pet. Okay. So the first thing I like to do, and now this is, this part that I'm about to explain is completely up to preference. And I'm going to explain why I do it my way. And you can take that for what you will and decide to do it however you like. So when I build a deck, I lock my right five spells and I leave my left five spells blank to rotate through here. So basic explanation on how decks work. If you, so the first thing you can do is you can put a skill into one of these bars down here. So I usually keep resurrection on my zero and locked. I do that because if I have a skill locked here, it will always be there. However, it will be subject to a cooldown if it's locked on the bar. You will notice it has removed one slug though, because it is still technically one glyph in my deck. But if it's locked, it'll just stay there. It will not rotate through my unlocked positions. However, I find that I don't need rise in any sort of fighting, uh, and usually when I do need to cast it, I can, I'm able to stand back, because if I'm resurrecting somebody, I'm usually trying to not get hit <laughs> so that I can resurrect them. But I like it on my combat bar so that I can go right back into combat after the fact. So by locking this on my bar, I guarantee that it is there when I need it. However, I don't have to worry about it coming up when I'm trying to fight things and things are rotating in my bar. And I'll explain more about that in a second. So two other skills that I usually lock are buffs. So I like defensive stance, which you can hover over, it says, increases damage resistance at the expense of attack speed. Well, I'm a mage, so I'm not worried about attack speed, so let's lock that in. And then I also like to put in enlightenment, which I lock that in, and that increases intelligence. Now something about enlightenment is it's a buff, but it, it can affect who I'm targeting. If I don't target myself and I'm targeting someone else, it will cast enlightenment on someone else. Now the reason I lock these in place is because they're buffs that last, this one lasts, I don't know. Well, the cooldown's 15 seconds, but the buff itself lasts longer than that. So I don't have to worry about the cooldown on it because I know that by the time it's off cooldown, I'm able to use it again. Same with enlightenment. So I guess I'll jump right into the unlocked ones really quick so that makes sense. If you have these unlocked and they say any glyph, we're eventually going to be pulling stuff into the drop glyphs here to add them to the deck. And when they're added into this deck, they will rotate through these open spots at which you can cast them as soon as they pull up. They ignore the cooldowns on spells, so it allows you to spam spells. It also allows you to stack spells, but I will get more into that once we have this deck built, and I will show you how all that works as well. So back to me having my right five locked. I also like it because it just keeps five glyphs that I have to focus on. There are some people that like to keep all ten unlocked, and they just spam and stack skills the entire time. Me, I like to keep the five over here, so these are the five I'm focusing on and knowing that these are going to be here if I need them. 
So I'm sure all this is getting pretty confusing. So let's go ahead and get this deck finished. And then I will give you guys an example of how it works as well. So let's see here. I like Dash, which is in the air tree. So let's scroll up to air. And then we have Dash. So Dash helps me run away faster. I like to have that locked because I usually only use it uh, when I'm running. And I, on I don't mind that it's on cooldown. And then let's put... Where is Sun? I like to put light on my bar too when I'm out in like the woods or something like this because it allows me to see. I could use night vision but it makes things look really wonky for me so I just put a little sun on myself. I'm good to go. So I have my five right locked which means I have 18 more to go or I'll get a slug. And what a slug is Pretty much, if I don't have at least 18 more glyphs in here, I have the chance of getting a slug. And a slug will block that square from not being able to be used. So let's try and show you what it looked like with a slug, too. So I'm going to add four searing rays for damage. Since it's just me, I'm going to add four healing touches, and that should cover healing myself. So damage, healing. I have buffs in my bar. We're going to need more damage. So let's do, we're going to be doing wolves, so they're going to be usually groups of enemies. So let's do chain lightning to target more than one. Regular lightning for the chance of stun. Alright, so we have possibility of getting two slugs. So let's go ahead and save this here, and let me see if I can show you what a slug, slug looks like. So once I have the deck completed, I'm going to go ahead and hit equip so that I have it and go into battle stance. Now you'll notice all this changed and my deck's gonna start producing. All right, so then once the deck starts producing, I have these five rotating through spells and these five are locked and you can see that they are subject to, to cooldowns. Now these will start to fade after a while and then they'll drop off and a new one will appear. Now when they're rotating like this, it gives you a chance to stack them, which you probably saw me just do. Now, there is a button you can press, I think it's R or T. Alright, select hotkeys to combo. So then, once I press R, I can hit 2 and 4, and it would target them and combo them. What I do is, you see 2 and 4 are able to be comboed, I will hold down 2, you see it light up red, and then I will hit 4 as well, and that'll stack on. Combos work the same way. You can stack spells or combo spells. And what you saw right there is a slug. It just means that for that time, you are not going to get any spells in that, in that slot. So that's a slug. Here's another slug. These are what we want to try to avoid, because it's one less spell we're able to cast. So let's go ahead and leave Battle Stance and finish our deck so we don't have any slugs. So modify. And let's add in... So you can see here too uh, where all my skills are. I have a bunch that I haven't really leveled yet. They're at 1. I have some at 2, some at 3, and the majority of all my spells are at 4. With the exception of consumables, <laughs> but that's because most of mine are at 40 and not yet at 80. So, let's see what else do we want to put in here. Probably another heal would be good, uh, seeing as I'm solo. So I'm going to go with Healing Ray because it doesn't use any regs. So now we have 18 total glyphs. It says we don't have any slugs. And what I will say is this. When you're making a deck, it will be very, very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, appealing. It'll be very appealing to just load it up with all your glyphs. I'm going to tell you right now, do not do that. Because then you will never be able to stack your skills. When you stack your skills, you save focus and they're stronger. Being able to stack skills efficiently is always something you want to work on and is extremely beneficial. If you have too many glyphs, you will never have the same ones pop. So you really want to try and stick to just, you know, 
four or five glyphs at most. And then you always want to use the bare minimal that you can for your deck because that way it guarantees you see the glyphs you put in there. If you have all these different glyphs in there, you never know what you're going to see. It'll be very unreliable. The spells that you're looking for won't show up. It, it'll just be very chaotic. So just use the bare minimal. That's why you also want to make them specific to the area and what you're doing. So as we can see here, I have one, two, three, ah, four, four different types of glyphs, five, including the healing rays. So I just threw in two healing rays as an extra heal. So, and you notice I use four of each. When I get these to 80, then I will be able to put in five of each of those and I will be able to eliminate those two altogether. So I have 18 rotating glyphs. I have five locked. So let me go kind of show you this in action. This is my passive bar. It's just loaded with junk because I'm constantly changing it, so don't pay any mind to that. So I'm going to go ahead and get in battle stance. I'm going to wait for all my cooldowns. I'm going to start stacking spells if it, if it doesn't mishap on me. But I'm going to start stacking spells before I enter combat so that I know that I have some strong spells to start with. I'm going to give myself a sun because it's nighttime. I'm going to give myself a defensive stance buff, which you can see appear up here. You can see where my buffs appear. I'm going to give myself enlightenment, so I have bonus intelligence. And then I'm going to... Oh, that one didn't go in time. Now keep in mind, I'm not like the best combat person, uh, but I do know how it works. So I usually can stay alive and kill things. So chain lightning is going to hit everything that's within range of the target I'm hitting. I'm going to keep trying to stack as well as combat. And I'm going to try not to use any spells unless they're stacked because then I know they're going to be stronger. Sometimes you will get bars like that where none of them are stacked but you want to keep going so go ahead and you know hit your skills don't just stand there. But as you can see, this is how the deck is working. Now I only have five different ones in here, so I have opportunities to stack. Uh, and then I only have the left five rotating, so for me that's good because I don't think that I could focus on all ten rotating. And then you can see I have the buffs here. These, This is already off cooldown. Alright, so look up here. Enlightenment is still going even though it's off cooldown. That's why it's locked in a bar. Uh, because by the time it's off cooldown, I won't even need it yet. I could hit it again if I wanted to refresh it to be on top of it, but not necessary. And uh, so with like defensive stance, let's take a look. It lasts for 56 seconds, and this cooldown on this is only 15 seconds. So if you want to put your buffs in the bar, you can lock them because by the time the cooldown's up, you won't even need it just yet. So there's no need to rotate it in your bar over here if you're not using it that frequently. So like these all have cooldowns as well, but they're completely ignored because they're rotating in my deck. If I didn't have these on a deck, the cooldowns would apply and I wouldn't be able to pretty much spam cast them on whatever I wanted. I wouldn't be able to just sit here and keep smashing whatever spells I needed. And now that's another big reason why you don't want to lock your whole bar either because you miss this whole opportunity to stack your spells to make them stronger. You miss the opportunity to have them rotate and be able to cast them much quicker. These wolves are kind of kicking my ass. <laughs> Luckily I have that stacked healing touch right there. you know, my super epic fighting skills. But anywho, so that's kind of just a run through on decks. Uh, I think I covered pretty much everything. As far as specific skills, that's going to be, ha that's going to have to be something you choose on your own. It depends on which attunement you're going for. It depends on what skills you're picking. Me personally, I'm a healer. That's what I do the most of. 
But if I'm out by myself, I need to do some damage. So I went with sun, and I went with air, because those are the two I liked. That, that's not any specific science behind that. Air's really strong. It has stuns, it has gusts, which can blow enemies back. It's just I feel like it's good defense for a healer. And sun I just did because light. And so I was like, screw it, I might as well go with the tree. <laughs> so that was legitimately my thinking behind it. So, Anywho, I really hope this helped you guys with uh, creating your decks and also understanding how attunement works with leveling. It, as always, any questions or concerns or something you might not have gotten, go ahead and put it in the comments below. And as always, I will continue trying to make more things and stuff explained as well as finding things and stuff because those are always fun as well and as always please leave a like and subscribe thanks guys we'll see you in the next video bye